Uh, it was a quarter to midnight, New Year's Eve, 1997. We got a call uh, that our house burned down. I was 13 at the time, my sister was 15, and we were on a family ski trip. Uh, so when we came back to the house, we had just our ski clothes, and we came back to like an empty carcass. I remember my dad turning around and being like, um, guess we should go to a hotel. And my mom being like, there'll be an indoor pool, it's a good thing we packed our suits. Uh, and so we went and we checked into this hotel um, and kind of started an adventure for me. Uh, we'd sometimes got to eat, uh, you know, room service or go to the continental breakfast before school. Um, my mom had went back to the house and rescued a couple bowls um, and she would put them out on the counter with some fruit and cereal for the morning. And so we'd feel a little bit like home. So my mom was kind of a ray of sunshine. I called her the month of May. She was a secure attachment for me really as a kid. Uh, my dad was drank quite a bit, and he was fairly inconsistent, like emotionally, also physical. His physical presence uh, was really inconsistent. But she kind of made the best of it, always. Um, you know, if he didn't show up for dinner, we would sing into spatulas around the kitchen. I remember her trying to teach me what vain meant. It was like a vocab word in sixth grade. She, she put on Carly Simon, You're So Vain, and we listened to it like 14 times. <laughs> And uh, she really made the best of every situation, and this was no exception. I remember I was sitting on my bed, my sister and I, at this point, for the first time ever, were sharing a room, um, you know, in, this, in the hotel. Kind of the kitchen was in between, oh, like a kind of dang kitchen and tiny living space. My parents were on the other side. Um, and so I was sitting on my bed doing, trying to do my homework, and I realized I needed scissors. Uh, but when your house burns down, you don't have things like scissors or markers. I mean, you really don't have anything. Um, and I remember being pretty, pretty frustrated. My mom was like, well, we'll just go to Staples. And I was like, school supplies in the middle of the year. Like, this is awesome. Um, and we dragged my sister. We walked like out of the room and down the hallway, like down the elevator, across the lobby, across the parking lot. And we went to Staples. And I got to get a whole bunch of stuff. I got scissors. I got a ruler. I got some markers. Um, my mom let me buy it. It's kind of ridiculous. My mom let me buy a $24 stapler. <laughs> it was like two pounds. It was like for a desk for adults. We had no desk. I was not an adult. <laughs> um, but it was, but it was, it was awesome. It felt really special. Uh, and of course, there's no place to put that stuff in a hotel room, so it just like sat in the staples bag on the floor. Um, and you know, it was, that's kind of what my life was like at that point. I was a little bit like famous in school. Um, I got to get out of gym class, and you know, things seemed to be moving along, which is why it was a little bit surprising. I woke up a couple weeks later um, in the middle of the night, like 1:30 in the morning, and to uh, crying. Now there's a lot of hotel noises. There's like you know, weddings go on and grandparents visit grandkids, etc. But this is a different like a different sort of noise and it felt really close. Um, and so I remember like pulling back the covers to my bed and you know, kind of creeping out towards the door to the kitchen. There was a light coming out through the bottom and I could hear crying coming from the kitchen. And I just remember being a little, little nervous, uh, not sure what to do. So I like, cracked the door just to peek so I could kind of peer in. And there was like the fluorescent light of the hotel room and the kind of like drab you know, kitchen cabinets on the counter was these like individual yogurts, uh, tiny bags of carrots. When you have a hotel refrigerator for a family of four, you can't buy like you know the big yogurts. You have to buy individual stuff, so it fits. Um, and in the middle of the kitchen was my mother, on her knees, uh, crying. She had on these like uh, pink rubber gloves, and a sponge, and some soft scrub. Um, I don't know where those items came from. Um, and she was cleaning our refrigerator. It was confusing to me uh, as a kid, right? I lived in a hotel. People came and made our beds and cleaned our stuff for us. I didn't know what she was doing, why she was crying. It was like 1.30 in the morning, and why she was cleaning. Um, and I, so I just watched her. Um, and I really I like felt her loss. You know, it was the first time it dawned on me that this was like real loss. Like we had lost our photo albums, and. She had lost her wedding dress. Um, I had lost my bike and you know, my stuffed animals, my favorite pillow. Um, and 
we had lost other things too, like these intangibles, like the driveway where we learned to ride our bikes and the banisters we pretended to be horses, that were pretended to be horses. The garden she and I kept in the back, you know, like it was the first time I realized we weren't going home. We were, we were not ever gonna go home. Um, you know, and I, my eyes started to fill and I closed the door. I rested my face against the door frame and I cried. And together, we grieved. <laughs>